Rebecca. I bought it. I can't believe you bought it. Hey, hey, hey. No, this thing is going for a lot on eBay right now. Uh-oh. Don't even think about it. Don't do it. I'm just going to get my phone out. It, it, uh-oh. Ooh. Ah, I told you this was a dumb idea. Ah, Hi, I'm Teresa. Welcome to Cocoon Cast, where we deep dive into movies and discuss all things cinema. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Today we'll be discussing the new movie, Dune Part 2. Rebecca, let's get started. I told you not to get the bucket. After receiving orders from the Emperor to journey to the desert planet of Arrakis, the House of Atreides disappeared almost as soon as they set foot there. At least, that's what the wider galaxy believes. But when Paul Atreides, son of the slain duke, decides to reassert his claim to Arrakis with the help of the local population, the Fremen, he finds himself in the crosshairs of an increasingly large target. With conflict coming from all sides, Paul must choose. Is one planet enough? Or will he forge for himself a greater destiny for his family name? So I see you got your phone back there. Yeah, the box kind of ooh, 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 made it kind of Teresa proof. And it's still not working. Oh, boy. Oh, ooh. yeah. No, I'm staying away from that thing. Okay. This is a sandworm safety zone. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> However, sandworms aside, you are so excited for this movie. Dune hype lives. I'm laughing. I'm like, ah, let's just cut it. Let's just figure out what you, we already know your rating. But let's talk about this movie you were the most excited about this year. Most excited. And then they kept bumping the release date. Let's get real here. I kind of recall, and I think the box would agree with you. It was supposed to come out on the box's birthday. He was excited. You both are excited. I'm the only one not excited. Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who bought me the book all those years ago. I would agree with that. However, I I laugh because you are just leaps and bounds so much more excited than I'm. And I read the book. I saw the 85 edition Dune with Sting and all of that. I've seen last one. In fact, we actually watched it, what, the night before we went to see this in IMAX. <laughs> and it was packed, packed, packed. Everybody was excited to see this movie. Well, like, it, I was already super excited, especially because Dennis did the first one so well, and I was... I would agree with that. I mean, I love the guy, but I'll admit I was nervous. Dune is a complex project if you're not prepared for the intricacies of character development. Oh, and by the way, did we mention big giant sandworms? Atmospheric conditions? Nothing fancy. I understand. <laughs> That was something. The cinematography, though, to me was beautiful. Well, there's a very good reason for that. The, the same guy who worked on Zero Dark Thirty did this one. So. Oh, the one who didn't win the Oscar that you're mm-hmm. like, uh-huh, no. Shoulda, 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 shoulda. that year, I'm still bitter. Uh, it sounds like it, but it was it, it was a long movie, right? Two, what, two hours, 40, 45 minutes? I think it was, actually, I think it was like two hours, 46 minutes. Mm-hmm. With trailers about three hours. And a special new Nicole Kidman promo if you're going to AMC. Oh, right. That's where we got to see it. And it was, it kept my interest, but not a lot of dialogue. I think the thing that was really rough for me was when we were watching this movie, this movie is serious. It is dramatic. It's a tale of intrigue. It's a tale of religious conflicts and how that intersects with the wider world and how the politics are played. And then there's some really genuinely funny moments yes. mined from these circumstances. Yes. And I felt like us and maybe two people behind us were the only people laughing in the theater and I'm just like you're missing out. I agree with that. Obviously, it, it, it's not hilariousness, but it, it's pretty funny. It, but it's funny. It's cheeky. Don't try to impress anyone. You're brave. We all know that. Be simple. Nothing fancy. I understand. Nothing fancy. And I agree with that because it is. It's such a drama and there are so many heavy themes that are happening. However, to me, they all intersected well. The acting was great. 
when they first announced Timothée Chalamet as the main protagonist, Paul Atreides, yes. I was nervous because one of the hardest sells in any Dune adaptation that you're going to run into mm-hmm. is this kid's a teenager yes. and you're expecting him to take up this great mantle of the cosmic destiny of the universe and you need him to have some maturity. <laughs> what, you don't want a 16-year-old run in your country? What's the problem? I'm going to resist making a comment about that. Yes. I'm just apprehensive every time that shows up kyle mclaughlin felt older he felt like a 20 something sure even the dune miniseries on sci-fi he still felt a bit older than the teenage years timotei definitely feels like a teenager but when he steps up to the plate he swings and he scores we gave them something to hope for that's not hope I agree. He is a very likable actor, and there was a transformation of him as Paul throughout the movie. By the end, consider what you're about to do, Paul Atreides. Silence. Chills. It, it really was, and we've seen him in a number of movies. I remember the box, and I saw him in Beautiful Boy. That was incredibly powerful. Recently, we reviewed him in Willy Wonka. He was in Little Women. He has quite a range. He has a range that hasn't been seen yet by the wider cinema community. I know. I really liked him in Bones and All. Oh, okay. (laughs) You're like, and then there's that one. But I think that that has something to do with that because you're, like you said, you love the books and the movies. And if it was poorly cast, it would just... Boy, it would just kind of run it, wouldn't it? The whole strength of the story falls on three characters. This is true. And if you have one of those characters in this triangle, and I'm not talking love triangle, collapses, then you have two characters left to pick up the slack, and that just wipes out two-thirds of the story because Paul is the driving force behind most of the story. And you have two younger actors. But also Austin Butler... He, it was funny, the box and I were having a discussion about him recently, because all we talk about is movies, truly. (laughs) But we were talking about, he almost feels like a younger version of Brad Pitt. I can see that, and not just because of the blonde hair and the mustache. Correct, no, and it's, it's not trying to be overly simplistic, but just the range of movies and his acting ability feels that way to me. I think the comparison I see when you mention Pitt is... How Brad Pitt, especially a lot in his earlier roles, and he kind of fell out of it for a little bit. Sure. But he started to kind of find that part of himself again, is being able to disappear into a role. Zendaya, I really like her, and she feels like she's everywhere. I think part of that is the publicity machine surrounding her. She is an ex-Disney star, so she's been given opportunities that a lot of actresses might have had to work longer for i like her though i i i can't say that i've seen her in anything that i don't like at this point and your buddy to rebecca ferguson yes as lady jessica and you said she was your favorite jessica's always been my favorite character in wow the books. that's pretty good the acting was good obviously the screenplay what really sells me in in the Dune movies are the costume design. Honestly, I I'm enthralled with the costume design always. And there weren't that many big distracting hats this time around. Oh, huh? right. <laughs> <laughs> I found that really added to the movie. The music, obviously, Hans Zimmer. Anything epic he does, right? Gladiator. I mean, it just, it it felt like a Hans Zimmer movie. I would have said uh, Johan Johansson. It also kind of feels like that a little bit, oh, too. Okay. You know? So you, I was laughing because the genre is, what is it, a science fiction space opera? 
This, the Dune series definitely puts the opera in space opera. <laughs> it really did. I had a hard time finding parts I didn't like because, as you've talked about, you love science fiction with a passion. I like science fiction with a like. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, and I've read the books and things, but for some reason, these movies really bring to life. And I know you were saying something about the compilation piece. Did you want to share with our cinema community that part? I think that helped. This helps, and I mentioned it when you and I first saw the first Dune in the Dune duology, the Duneology, Duneology. <laughs> that Dennis has directed, Correct. was that it distills all of these different versions of Dune into an easily understandable package, but there's also room for a lot of the deeper layers to kind of grow in this situation. Correct, and it didn't feel like duct tape, duct tape, duct tape. It felt very fluid. And that's hard because I know we had talked earlier on our weekend show about Tron and trying to appease multiple different audiences and people that love specific versions. I think that that would be a hard sell. Dune has a following. Dune definitely has a following. The other thing is you have audiences that go, I like this version the best. I like this version. Here's what I get out of this. You have just a intersecting cluster of all of these people that maybe want to see something different out of your movie. I will say the buzz in our theater and from what I'm hearing, and we try really hard not to include spoilers in our reviews or read other critics and their opinion, but the buzz was, this is a great movie to see. The thing that really sold me Hmm. was the silence. Uh, during this movie now i made a joke about it earlier in the show about how nobody seemed to laugh they're all just like correct at the screen but to me that's a good film where an audience is not watching in shock like i can't wait to see what happens next the silence to me is contemplative it's exciting it's weighty it's like what's going to happen next That's funny, too, because even though I knew what would happen next, right, for all intents and purposes, unless they really went off the rail, but (laughs) unless a sandworm ate them, you know, that would have shocked me. But there was a part where the dialogue didn't get in the way of that. And I know I've talked about it on Cocoon Cast before, but absence of dialogue, that doesn't mean there's not a lot of emotion Several characters didn't have too many lines. There's actually a couple characters from the book that got whacked. I know. You, oh, that's right. Actually. I know you and I had talked about how there's one fan favorite character. He was announced in the variety announcement. And once they're like, we got everybody back. And then he's like, no, we're in the movie. In the story that's presented in the book, this character appears and he has a crucial moment. But Dennis definitely knows when to cut the extraneous bits because I feel like a lesser director would be like, let's throw everything in. It's a two and a 40 hour and 40 minute movie. That's a great point. But Dennis takes these moments and he knows just how to tweak it to get maximum drama. In fact, there's a similar outcome to what happens in the book, but it's a different character delivering it. I know for you, you were saying your one of your favorite lines or your favorite line. One of my favorite lines from the book got cut. And oh, tell our cinema community, <laughs> uh, tell us that line. It was a good one. There's a line where Paul and Shawnee are trying to figure out what their relationship status is. Correct. People from Arrakis, they're just like us. And Jessica has an excellent line in the book where she's trying to reassure Chani, her world's not changing for the worse. Yes. It's just going to be a little bit different than what she expected. And it really sets up an arc for the next book in the series. Dennis cut this line. And I was a little <laughs> frustrated because there was a good opportunity for this line in the movie. But then I kind of stepped back and I'm like, okay, I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to set up this arc more. But... It just felt a little bit like you're going to have to get somewhere, but your vision's different than mine. And it was just, 
I don't know. I'm not a Dune purist, but that kind of irked me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there are people that are purist and will miss certain pieces. But I think that's the part that you're saying. If you trust Dennis to produce a wonderful movie, which we both believe he did, it's fair to say he will make judiciously decisions of what to do and how to cut it. And as you said, it was very fluid, but it is. It's it, We always laugh, right? Trust the process. It's trusting the director. And I think it helps that I've had such a long history with Dennis's films. I, the first film I saw of Dennis's in theatrical release was Prisoners. I saw that with the box. Oh, okay. And you really enjoyed that. I did. It's, it's a bit scary, so definitely check out the warnings before you decide to watch it might trip up some folks i know like you were worried about taking this would definitely set off your <laughs> button yeah <laughs> <laughs> do we have any questions from the box dennis has talked about wanting to do the next book of the series and do this next movie do you think this film ended in a really good place to facilitate that if you know the story behind dune messiah there's a couple elements that have been tweaked i think it can still serve as an ending where you can immediately jump into Dune Messiah, Dennis's version though. This movie did that, correct? The last Dune and then part two. Literally, we were talking how many hours it felt like it was like I roll over and then boof, here I am. I agree. I think especially because Paul's journey is predicated on cycles repeating, this breaking, true. And forging new cycles. Yes. So I think this can definitely serve as a half of his journey, which Dune Messiah is set up to be the first half of his journey. Do we have any other questions from the box? The story has been adapted multiple times in movies. What do you think the strength of this adaptation is? I think the strength of this adaptation is something that you're not going to expect me to say from a Dune movie. It's minimalization. Dennis picks his strengths carefully. He thinks long term because he knows the complete story of where it's going to end. And he specifically has said, I want to work up to Dune Messiah. Rebecca, it is that time of the show. We have five moths and they are free from the sandworm. What do you think? What do you think? They're coming home with me today. It's a five moth movie. Wow. Can you narrow it down to number one reason why? This movie feels like, A, a complete movie on its own. That is correct. But it also feels like a complete half of the movie that it was following. I think that's really tough to do sometimes with a duology is because yes. you're always kind of arcing towards that climax and then, then there's a drop off. With this, it lets you down slowly, but you still have no shortage of excitement along the way. I would agree with that. And you love this movie so much that what are you doing <laughs> tomorrow night? It's Dolby tomorrow night. Exactly. We're, we're going to go see it again. I would say five moth movie. You're going to be surprised. What do you think? Four and a wing. I'm going to give it a five. Oh, <laughs> it was that good. And as you said, you love everything Dune. I like everything Dune, but for the reasons you said, it was very much a complete movie and it didn't feel so lost in the woods that I was confused with this and this and this and this and all of these names and things, which sometimes sci-fi, it's you really have to suspend a certain part of reality to enjoy. And I struggle with the suspending reality in, to that high of a level. Dune doesn't require that of me. I think it's more accessible to just average people like myself. I think it helps that it's not a hard science fiction property, like, Correct. say, The Expanse, where much focus is placed on the science as much as the characters. Correct. And I understand that people love those movies, so I obviously wouldn't want to take that away. But the mainstream piece I appreciated, and I know you and I were talking about it, felt almost like a Greek tragedy of certain proportions. It felt like, you know, early Russian history. I mean, it just... So many different things. We were talking about Lady Jessica feeling almost like a Lady Macbeth kind of a piece. <laughs> it, to me, that's a smart movie, but it takes a quality director, quality acting, quality screenplay, quality producing to make that come to life. There's so many moments in this movie where it could feel cheap. It could feel Correct. trite. It could just feel like, and now we're throwing this thing on the pile. Yes. 
but it flows. It works together. And That's it, a good statement. There's so many ways I can watch this movie. I know you and I talk about sometimes when we're watching a movie, we're keeping an ear out for this. We're keeping an eye out specifically for this. Yes. These are movies that I can come back to again and again and again, and I have. <laughs> Correct. And you will with this one. I, I already know that. Director's Cut, I'm, I'm seeing you go, ooh, that's that's the next big. Four-hour director's cut. Four-hour director's cut. Wow. Move over, see. Napoleon. Oh, oh, the five-hour cut. Thanks for joining us. We're always excited to create experiences to bring our cinema community together. Watch the notifications for a review of the new movie, Cabrini. Then come back to the channel this weekend for a weekly show, Movies and More, where we will have more movie reviews, the latest Hollywood news, and commentary of snark meant to amuse. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out and share our channel with your friends. If you enjoyed this movie review, you might click the link to check out our review of Ordinary Angels or click the other link to watch last week's show where we reviewed Kiss the Future. Remember, cinema community movies are better, better together. together. Thanks for watching. See you in the next review. This is going to be fun. <laughs> See? Jesus, things are to get off. That's and what then, she said. Then there's like this thing. Okay. This is my sound effect number two. Be quiet. Take the bucket. Oh, okay. Well, I don't. It's know. like in church. Take the bucket. <laughs> yeah, this is the offering All bucket. Right, so you put the money in and you can't get it back out. I... Oh, that's what you were doing. Oh, oh, okay. All right, I see it. What are we doing with that thing? Okay, and then go ahead and put your hand in. Come on. You seriously going to do this? Well, it's my phone. What are you talking? It's a sandworm bucket. Thing probably ate your phone. Let it go. Let it go. No, I, I can't get my phone. It's not that big of a deal. It's it's really... Okay. It's not. Okay. I told you this was oh, oh, oh. ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go ahead and pull your phone out so we don't drop it or do something stupid. Wait, something actually stupid? Yeah. Oh, good. All right, that's good enough.